Senator Ted Cruz, welcome back. Welcome. Good morning. Good to be with you guys. As this thing unfolds, your thought. I mean, these are allies, yeah. NATO allies, yes. and you see this dense city in a major thoroughfare. Well, all of us, our, our thoughts and prayers are, are with the families, with those who were murdered and, and those who were, who were wounded, and, and especially the three Americans, the Mormon missionaries who were wounded mm -hmm. in, in the terror attack in Brussels. Right. And, and, and what this attack, I think, really reminded everyone is, is this was not a lone wolf. This was not an isolated incident. It is part of a global jihad that is being waged by radical Islamic terrorism, that is being waged by ISIS. Right. And, and at, this is a time that really underscores we need a commander in chief who will identify the enemy, identify it by name, and do everything necessary to defeat radical Islamic terrorism and, and to destroy ISIS. Let me ask you this, Senator. How different would Hillary Clinton's approach be to prosecuting this war against ISIS as opposed to our current commander in chief? You know, there's no reason to think Hillary would be any different from Barack Obama. If you look at foreign policy, I mean, Hillary was the architect of the Obama foreign policy. has been a disaster a disaster across the world. I mean, it has been the Obama-Clinton-Kerry foreign policy, and every region of the world has gotten worse under their leadership. We've abandoned our friends and allies. Barack Obama and Hillary Clinton have been the most hostile administration in history to the nation of Israel, and the weakness and appeasement from this administration has led to the rise of radical Islamic terrorism. And what's bizarre is the political correctness that they will not even say the words radical Islamic terrorism. Instead, after every attack, after Paris, mm -hmm. after San Bernardino, the president goes on television and lectures Americans on Islamophobia. Well, Senator, enough is enough. That's because Islam is a peaceful religion. <laughs> it, it's, they are so captive to political correctness that they will not identify the enemy. Right. They don't do what's needed what to stop What is your plan it? for immigration oh. here yeah. for our country and for the borders? Mm -hmm. Because a lot of people are worried about this with the refugees in yes. Syria. Are yes. we going to allow them into our country? Because yeah. many of them could be right. terrorists. Uh, that is exactly right. And, and, and Obama and Hillary's plan to bring tens of thousands of Syrian Muslim refugees to mm -hmm. this country, it, it's lunacy. It, it's, it's the product of that political correctness mm -hmm. because they don't acknowledge the threat ISIS has said they intend to infiltrate those refugees. That's part of where the Paris uh, attackers came from. And the head of the FBI, James Comey, who was appointed by Barack Obama, told Congress the FBI cannot vet these refugees to make sure they're not ISIS terrorists. Right. It makes no sense, and we need a president, a commander-in-chief, whose first responsibility is to keep America safe. That's what I'll do as president. Now, uh, we just talked to Lieutenant General Michael Flynn. He used to run yeah, the DIA. Yeah. He left very disgruntled. He's going to yes. write a book about it. He essentially said every moment matters that we allow yes. ISIS to exist. Yes. Did Congress and the president drop the ball in allowing ISIS to take root? Because mm -hmm. I know you were against going into Syria. Well, look, going into Syria, what the president proposed there was a unilateral military attack, attack that would have been utterly ineffective. He was targeting Assad. We need to be targeting ISIS. And as president, mm -hmm. I will utterly destroy ISIS. We will use overwhelming air power, carpet bomb them into oblivion. We will take that out... That would kill a lot of civilians, carpet bombing. We, would, we would, wouldn't be directing it at civilians. We would be directing but it... But they would, are in with civilians. But now. we would take out their command and control facilities. We would take out their infrastructure. We'd take out their communication. We'd take out their transportation. We'd take out the oil fields. We'd take out their refineries. We'd right. take out their troops. We use overwhelming air power. And then we arm the Kurds, our boots on the ground, to, who are fighting them now. We right. arm them, and then we embed which special you... forces. But the difference is we wouldn't do what we're doing now, which, which is have rules of engagement that tie our troops' hands behind their back. If and when we use military force, we use overwhelming power and kill the enemy. Would you engage in, in torture? Donald Trump was saying he would engage in, in, in Tanzania. Waterboarding. Yeah. Waterboarding, uh, right. Look, America has never engaged in torture, and, and we're not about to. But what we do need is a commander-in-chief that is focused on completely destroying ISIS. And I will say, listen, every, every jihadist across the face of the globe should understand that their day of reckoning is coming. On January 2017, this era of appeasement will end. And we are coming after the jihadists. We're not coming to negotiate with them. We're not coming to capture them. We're coming to kill them. Yeah. Senator, uh, we're learning more. You know, a lot of people haven't heard about the threat 
the terror threat coming out of one particular neighborhood in Brussels. And, yeah. you yeah. know, apparently there's not good community relations between the police right. and, and the people who live there. You said yesterday that if you were president of the United States, you would patrol and secure mm -hmm. Muslim mm -hmm. neighborhoods. Mm -hmm. You took some flack for that. Yeah. What did you mean? Well, listen, we need a focused approach to stopping radical Islamic terrorism here in New York City. Mayor Bloomberg was a program of proactive policing that engaged cooperatively with Muslim communities mm -hmm. to stop radicalization and to apprehend, to anticipate and stop radical Islamic terrorist attacks before they occur. Mayor Bill de Blasio, in, in, in a fit of political correctness, canceled that program. And, and it makes no sense right. for us to be less than vigilant. And you're right. Are we been, less safe in New York because you canceled uh, that of program? Of course we are. Of course we are. And it's denying the threat we face. And, and it's been amazing watching Democrats. Mayor de Blasio had a press conference yesterday just, just attacking me and getting all upset. Mm -hmm. He seems more upset that I'm calling for stopping the terrorists than he is at the terrorism. It's just right. like President Obama. And I'll tell you this. I will apologize to no one for how vigorous I will be as commander-in-chief right. destroying ISIS and keeping this country safe. And you, sooner or later, you're going to be back here uh, going at maybe uh, Donald Trump directly with uh, Bill O'Reilly as a moderator. And I want to give you a chance to finish, but you also have a chance to congratulate you on the huge win in Utah last night. Oh, People you. said yeah. you have to get over 50% yeah. to take them all. You got around 70%. Yeah. It is now 744 for Donald Trump, 468 for you, and for Governor Kasich, uh, 172. How do you close the gap? Well, last night was a terrific victory. As you noted, we were, hoping, Arizona went to, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, we, we were hoping to break 50 percent in Utah. We ended up with a landslide of 69 percent, nearly 70 percent. And what we're seeing is we're seeing Republicans uniting behind our campaign. You know, this morning, Jeb Bush endorsed our campaign. Mm -hmm. What's and your reaction to that? It's fantastic. I think Jeb, I'm very grateful to have Jeb's support. And in the last 10 days, our campaign has been supported by Jeb Bush, Mitt Romney, Mike Lee, and Mark Levin. Now you want to talk about the broad spectrum of the Republican Party. That is the full ideological range. Right. And what we're seeing is Republicans coming together because if Donald Trump is the nominee, wins. And I beat Hillary Clinton. You know, there was an amazing polling last week in Utah that if Donald Trump were the nominee, Hillary beats Trump in Utah, bright red conservative well, Utah. That's what John, Ka and John Kasich right. saying. That's why he thinks he could win in the fall because he's the only one he says, according to the polls, that could win and can beat Hillary. Well, look, Kasich is mathematically eliminated. It is impossible mm -hmm. for him to beat yeah. Donald Trump unless we go to a contested uh, convention. It's impossible then too because the RNC rules say to be on the ballot. You have to have won eight states. But, but that, they can't override that. But, but they're not going to. You're not going to change the rules after the fact. John Kasich Anything went, is possible in politics, though, it seems. Kasich went 0 for 27. Then he won his home state. Last mm -hmm. night he got walloped in both Utah and Arizona. In two weeks yeah. he's going to lose in Wisconsin. Kasich's role right now is simply as a spoiler. The only thing he can do is help Donald Trump. You know what Mitt Romney said this week? But Senator, is he but, said a vote right. for John Kasich is a vote for Donald Trump because he's just bleeding and, votes away that helps Trump have I've heard you say that before, but you're also a realist, right. and you know that uh, in New York, New York values is not going to work to your advantage. In Pennsylvania, New Jersey, Connecticut, these states on the surface in the polling doesn't, doesn't look strong for Ted Cruz. Uh, Brian, that, that, that's simply not accurate. Head to head. We beat Donald, and we beat him by double digits. We beat him by 13 points. And I'll tell you, here in, New York? In, here in New York, the support we have on the ground. Listen, New Yorkers understand the liberal democratic vi values that their politicians have foisted on them. You want, to, you want me to give you an example? When the NYPD stood up and turned their back on Mayor Bill de Blasio, that was a powerful statement re rejecting yep. this political correctness, this siding with criminals and looters over the cops. And that seared across the country. And as I, it, it, we are seeing tremendous support from police officers, from firefighters, from first responders, from working men and women who have been suffering, suffering under the failed left wing policies of Democrats in New York for a long time. And let me point out, those Democrats have been supported by Donald Trump, whether it was Hillary Clinton, whether it was Andrew Cuomo, whether it, whether it was Anthony Weiner, whether it was Charlie Rangel, or all Rudy of, Giuliani. Uh, all of those left-wing Democrats. Yeah. Donald Trump has been supporting for 40 years. And, and 
New Yorkers have been paying the price for their failed policies. All Unfortunately, right. in live TV, we can't have you here for the whole hour or for two hours or three hours or whatever. He's got to go shake stay. hands and kiss babies. I know. Right. We promise Senator, you'll come back because I have so many more questions for you. We all do.